This guy scaled his marketing agency from zero to $100,000 per month in six months. And the craziest part about all of this is that he did it in one of the most competitive and saturated niches in the whole entire world. And in this interview, we're going to reveal everything. Why don't we take a step back? I'd love to uh, have you share your story on like how you got to the point even where you had 20 clients in the auto space. And then really your story from after you joined Agency Lab, how you took this thing from zero to 100K a month. I know that's going to be a long answer, so feel free to take your time. But I think that's, I'd love to really just um, take a step back and dive a little deep there. And then we can kind of go into more specifics. You know? For sure. Yeah. No, that's a great question. Um, so, like, my actual story, uh, in terms of like where I started, my 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 first job that I really got was was out of right out of college. And it's funny, it was actually doing car sales. I went to Florida State. I got a degree in finance, minor in economics, graduated, and then it was like boom, um, 2010, right, height of the financial crisis. So there was no way I was getting a job that was related to that. You know, there's people with so much experience that were laid off. And my dad was like, hey, if you don't have a job within six months, like you're cut off. So I was like, okay. You know, it's so like month five, run out, get a job at the car dealership, you know, started selling cars. Mm. Um, did that for like five months, worked uh, my way up to the finance role, which is where you, you know, go over the contracting, go over like finance and insurance different things like that. Um, and then did that for a couple of years and did well, was actually pretty successful with it, um, had an over six figure income doing it. I was like 24. Um, and so the money kind of sucked me in and, and kept me around for a little while. So I did that for about five years, but still, um, it's a brutal job. You know, you, you work nights, weekends, holidays, um, you know, all times of the day, the night. Um, and so that's just retail. So I, I, all of a sudden one day just like decided, man, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, How old were you when that happened? At, at that point I was so 23, six, 29. 29. Yeah. So you, you were there from 24 to 29. Yeah. So after college, you get a job selling cars, yeah. move up to the finance department. You get really comfortable making six figures a year. You get sucked in. And then at 29, do you just have this like epiphany? You're like, I need to leave. It was actually my dad. Um, so my dad, he's obviously, you know, we're Indian. So he was always perturbed by me being in like the car industry and not like, wanting more and it just would bother him and you know so it was 20 i want to say like 2017 2016 ish um yeah 2017 like november he concocted this rat grin master plan to like take me traveling show me like different things and like see if he could get me like unstuck from this like small worldview which he thought I had and just being stuck in the car dealership so mm. we like flew to China we went on this trip we went to like Hong Kong we went to these like business fairs and all this different stuff and then I came back and I was like yeah you know I think that you're right and that's that's actually what inspired me to kind of quit and you were like I'm going to start a marketing agency no I didn't know what to do I literally just quit and then like for eight months that's I had cool. no job <laughs> I lived at home <laughs> Is like literally had no job. Um, didn't know what. I mean, at I least you have. You know what's one of the uh, one of your best qualities is that you are aware of like your fears or your insecurities, but you still do it anyways. Like you still take the leap over and over and over again. That's something that I've recognized about you since day one. You know, you're like, hey, I don't know if I want to hop on stage and take the mic in Costa Rica at our event, but I'm gonna do it anyways, right? Um, so that's cool. So you just were like, all right, I'm going to quit. And then for eight months, you're just thinking, and then how do you go from that to I'm a marketing agency owner? Yeah. So great question. Um, from there, I was actually just hanging around and some of the people that I used to work with, um, 
they work with a direct mail marketing agency that was working with automotive dealerships in order to sell mail. And um, one of my buddies was like, hey, you should come join this and you know you should check it out. We make way more money than we did at the dealership. It's 10 days at a time and like you get actual time off. I was like, whoa. So you know, he's like, also oh, you're 1099. So you can say whether you want to work, whether you don't want to work. And for me, I was like, okay, this is attractive. So I joined with that, um, did that for a little bit. And again, was just kind of like, man, this is, I don't want to do this. Then from there, fast forward, I joined the actual marketing agency on the marketing side. And I was supposed to sell, uh, direct a mail to car dealers. And, um, I had no idea what to do with that, but I, I did know how like some loose digital marketing stuff. So um, I was like, you know, why don't we try doing digital marketing? And so from there, that's how I started doing digital marketing for like some internal like people that mm. we actually just personally knew that went well. Um, and then uh, one of the business partners bought a car dealership. We did digital marketing for that. That went very well. And there, it's part of a group that had like multiple other stores. And because we did well, these other people, they all called us and wanted us to do their marketing too. Um, so those clients that I had actually gotten, every single one of them was a referral deal. I didn't know anything. And so every one of those deals was structured where I just took 20% of ads. Away. So it was crazy. Like we had the 19 clients and each one would spend like three or four grand and, you know, we we got 20% or whatever that was. So we were running a whole agency for that. And I did, I really didn't know any better. I mean, it was just me and I was just doing my best. You were still working at the agency. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And then eventually like what led you to start your own? Like how did that happen? Um, well that all came about after, you know, your program. Um, just like, so you were still at that agency. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the entire pivot was just like when, because, and that's the thing, even though I had had clients prior, again, I was a marketer. I didn't understand the business model. I'd never run paid ads, acquired a client, mm. done a sale. Uh, when you have referral business, it's, it's very different. Um, and again, when you're taking that non-productized consultative approach where you just kind of, hey, what do you need? How can I help you? And then you kind of come at it that way. Um, it's, it's a lot different. So when, when we joined your program, that's when we kind of learned about that those systems. We had you actually help us put together our funnel, um, start acquiring the dental clients. Um, and yeah, once we kind of, you know, learned, okay, run a paid ad, you know, get an actual client, sign them up, you know, in terms of this is how a retainer works, you know, this is how to do contracts, you know, this is the portion of the work you can outsource. I Prior to joining your program, we had over 19 clients. Um, you know, I want to say our revenue, it was not great, maybe 30, 40K, but I didn't even know what a VA was. I had, I did every single mm. thing from start to finish myself. Wow. And I was like amazed that there was people that could actually help you um, from other countries <laughs> do all these admin tasks. Wow. That's cool, man. I feel like every, like, the more you do it, the more you realize uh, there's a lot of business owners that just have no idea of all these things that internet marketers have figured out, you know? Um, exactly. One of my, one of my good friends, uh, Lo Silva says that internet marketers would destroy people with Harvard degrees when it comes to marketing and systems and all that stuff where they beat you. It's just thinking bigger and playing a bigger game. Um, and obviously having the connections and all that good stuff, but it's like all these things like VAs, SOPs, automations, like, yeah, I, I guess sometimes I take it for granted that we uh, use all those things. Okay. So then you join the program and, and you're like, all right, I'm going to start um, my own agency, I guess, aside from the dent, the auto agency. Right. Yeah. And what <clears throat> you were just like, I'm going to go into dental. Like, what was the thought process there? So my and thought how, process, and then, and then how did you get to hundred K a month? Tell us, tell us the full story. <laughs> <laughs> the full story. So the thought <laughs> process actually going into dental was, um, I had had some background in dental, um, long before, like when I first came out, my dad still wanted me to do medicine, et cetera, et cetera. He was like, 
you know, my big fear in going into medicine was like my dad, he would always be on call and he'd be going to the hospital at two or three o'clock in the morning. He'd work from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I'm like, there's no way I want to do that. And he'd be like, well, be a dentist. They, they work nine to five and like they do this, that or the other. So he kind of pushed me through that mm-hmm. track. and He wanted me to kind of go that direction kind of when I was still kind of landing on what I wanted to do. And so through that adventure, I had gotten a, a, cert, a certificate in dental assisting. So um, <clears throat> it, it's one of the best pieces of advice I could give to anybody, whether you're switching a niche or starting out. Um, it, it, you got like, for me, I feel like my superpower in that niche is that I can speak their language very easily. So if you are able to create that connection, build that rapport, speak in that language, to a highly analytical, sophisticated crowd, um, you know, they're automatically going to understand that you can actually help them solve their problems. So that's a big thing that I feel like drew me to there. Um, Mm. It's a very easy conversation for me to have when I'm speaking with a dentist. So you had a competitive advantage there. You knew the language, you knew that you understood the, your ideal clients, what their pain points were, what their desires were. Um, and then obviously your, you know, your family being in medical, it just made it easier. Right. Um, yeah. so how did you go from zero to hundred K a month? Like walk us through that. And I know you don't have to give away all the secrets, but like, what was the journey? Like, how did you get clients? Um, how was it at the beginning? Was it a lot harder? Was it, did it get easier? Walk us through all that. Yeah. Um, so it's funny. I, I really feel like the reason I scaled quickly is by keeping everything like uncomplicated. Like as as crazy as that sounds, I feel like when you're starting out, you you can't try and over finesse things. You have to generate revenue, and you have to really learn from that, and you have to you know take action while you're in the middle of the battle. Um, and I feel like so many people you know get stuck in preparing for battle versus getting out there and actually being okay, taking some L's and then uh, pushing forward. So, you know, that was, that was definitely one of the things that, that I think, you know, was, was a big part for me, but in terms of like hitting a hundred K tactically, um, you know, I, our offer makes it <clears throat> very easy for people to join. Um, we don't typically charge them in the first 30 days. Um, other than, you know, the advertising spend and they do get the opportunity to kind of test drive our system. Um, on top of that, we coupled it with, uh, you know, something that you preach, which is innovation, right? Uh, we came in at the right time when TikTok was taking off, um, and versus trying to go in and, and recreate a Facebook system that was already in the marketplace. Um, you know, I kind of went the TikTok route and, I feel like that did make it very easy for us to to build that sales momentum because you're not having that comparison in the marketplace one to one. Um, plus, you're making it easy to move forward. Uh, so then, you know, customers will come on board. You know, you couple that with paid ads, and then somebody, uh, you know, like you know, working with your team in, in terms of putting together like a sales system, a pitch a pitch deck, and onboarding. Uh, you know, and then consulting with you guys uh, as we scaled on which piece was the right one to put in at the right time um, was also pivotal because um, that was something that helped us, you know, maintain focus. And then of course, another big thing is because I have a strong sales background, um, I own the sales and my goal was to always Mm. build revenue to, 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 uh, be able to solve problems, uh, you know, through revenue. I know I'm not the best, at everything, but I, I know that if we can, you know, keep our eye on the ball in terms of sales, generate that revenue, that will give us that breathing room to go in and get help or the best person to fix whatever problem we're facing. So I've always kind of really been heavily involved in sales and built the rest around me to where I have to do as little outside of that, you know, segment as possible. That's really cool. So just to recap, it seems like here's the biggest things that allowed you to scale to hundred K a month quickly. You mentioned paid ads. So you used paid ads to get clients. That was, was that like the only thing that you used? The only thing I used. Um, so when we started working with your team, it did take like 45 days to our, 
to get our funnel set up, right? Uh, because we had to build our ideal client profile. We had to, you know, it was very involved when we got that set up because I had literally, I had nothing. I didn't even have an offer when I came to your team. Um, and mm. uh, in the interim, I had gotten so antsy, you know, I wanted to get, do all these like DM and cold email and this, that, you know, creates activity. Um, and I, I invested in it, but yeah, none of it paid off. And the minute we turned on ads, um, you know, I, I did it at about five times the budget I, I wanted to, and I never turned it down and never turned it off and just and knew that, you know, I had to sell in order for it to make sense and to keep those ads on. And so for me, that was always the pressure. That's cool, man. Um, like I said, one of your biggest talents that maybe you're not aware of is leaning into the fear and doing it anyways, just like you just mentioned. Um, so that's really cool. It seems like here's the biggest kind of pillars uh, or factors that allowed you to scale quickly. Number one, you ran paid ads. So you're able to build a lot of momentum. Number two, you offered free trials. You made it really easy for people to get started. That's what I like to call an easy yes offer. You're making it really easy for people to say yes to working with you. Uh, number three, you added some degree of innovation back when no one was running TikTok ads. You're like, you know what? Everyone's running Facebook, Google, SEO. I'm going to solve, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create an offer that aligns with a need or a desire that these dentists have that no one else is solving for, which at the time was TikTok. And really the takeaway there is you have to innovate. You have to figure out a, a way to be a little bit different, a little bit better, a little bit more unique than everyone else. It also seems... I really don't want to undermine this. One of the other things that really allowed you to scale quickly was having that sales background. I think uh, one of the hardest things when people starting out is not being good at sales. And it's like, okay, well, they're afraid to run paid ads because let's say they run paid ads and they get an appointment, but then they can't close it. Now it's just a waste of money. So I think um, the takeaway for anyone watching or listening in is that if you're just starting out, you need to triple, quadruple down on getting good at sales. At the very least, you should be practicing one hour per day. You should be consuming a ton of sales uh, content. You should be role-playing. And you should make it as easy as possible for you to get on the phone with people so that you can get over those fears and get comfortable uh, speaking to prospects. And I think the other uh, big factor that I think allowed you to scale quickly based on what you're talking about is really knowing the niche. I think a lot of people uh, skip that. But if you can take the first month, even though that's a long time when you're just starting out and you're antsy and you want to get going, if you could take that first month just to learn the niche and actually read some of the things they read and adopt some of the same vocabulary that they have, I think it'll give you such a huge competitive advantage that most people wait a few years to really sink their teeth into, but imagine the opportunity cost in that. So those were kind of the big elements that I heard. Is there anything else that you feel like allowed you to scale quickly? Because again, zero to hundred K month in six months is pretty freaking amazing. Um, is there anything else that you feel like these were like the big needle movers? Yeah, those were all huge. Um, the only other thing, I mean, I think, which is the one thing that I think I had the luxury of, and I think did also immediately help my scale um, was being intentional about, um, you know, starting to build and leverage a network of people as well, too. Um, so, you know, you had your event in Costa Rica uh, that was, uh, was was back there. And I, that's where I kind of met George um, and a few other players. And I was I had only had set. I only had seven clients at that time. And I believe what was that? That was in April. Right. Um, and that was my first in-person event that I had ever attended. Um, and like I said, you know, I had done this for a little while with the automotive clients, but just to get around a bunch of people to mm. know that it was that they had the same struggles. Um, there's people further ahead of me that, you know, I, again, you know, had already paved the way and I could pick their brains and, and have apply that immediately to the problems that I was facing. Um, to, to kind of unstick and, and remove those obstacles um, is it was a huge help. Um, and I think that if you can and you have the ability to, 
um, get around people that are doing uh, similar things, uh, you know, there is a good amount of, I think, content out there. There is, you know, coaching programs like yours that I joined. Um, there's events that are out there. There's groups that are out there. Um, those, that is a big thing that you can leverage in order to be able to shortcut that learning curve. Um, because truth be told, I feel like getting zero to a hundred K, um, yes, it's hard. Um, there is a lot involved with it. There is work, um, and all those kinds of things, but there are enough people that have done that and paved that way to where it can be achievable. If you really do take that time to put in the things, get the right elements, have that minor element of luck, go all in, get around the right people. Um, you know, it, it, it's not something that's, that's kind of out of touch for anybody. One of the things that I found interesting in your journey is that you invested into coaching with us. You invested into coming to our in-person event before really having a lot of success. And I think a lot of people wait and they tell themselves, Hey, once I achieve 20 K 30 K a month, 40 K a month, then I'll invest. But it's kind of like a catch 22. If you invest first, then you achieve it faster. Um, why do you think most people hold back? And, and why did you choose to invest earlier on, even if you didn't have all the clients to show for it, right? Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's fear, right? It's always the, the fear of, of not having that return um, on that outlay. Um, and also, I think, you know, people have to really believe in themselves. That's a big piece that kind mm -hmm. of uh, really weighs in on, on whether you're going to succeed or not, you know, and when you invest in these types of things. And, you know, when I was in Costa Rica and uh, you guys were rolling out the opportunity to start doing the in-person events, um, it was like literally 30 minutes before you had given out, you know, the 100K awards and there was eight people that, that, that received it. And all eight of them were the first one to sign up for the in-person events. And I was like, okay, there's a high level of correlation here between the people who are taking action that are attending these things um, and they're seeing high level of success. Um, and so that's what really pushed me to invest. And I was like, you know, um, I, I'm a really analytical person. And, you know, I, I had the metric when I talked to the team and they were like, you know, there's been 80 or 70 people or whatever out of the total that have hit hundred K plus. And I did the math and I was like, okay, there's like roughly 500 people in here, you know, 70. I was like, so I got to be in the top 18% in order of, of basically the people within this subset group in order to be a top achiever, hit that number. And I said, man, I always bet on myself to be in the top 20% when it comes to things like this. <laughs> I just said, I'll do it. Um, so that's where I say, you got to have that conviction in yourself. Um, you know, when you make that investment to know that it's not a cost and when you're not paying Joel Kaplan, you're investing in yourself, right? There's going to be 800 people that sign up for that program, whether you do or not. It's not about that. It's, it's taking that leap of faith and understanding you're investing in yourself. And that's what it is, uh, when you, when you make those kinds of decisions and from zero to a hundred in my agency, I mean, I, I did the same with coaching. I think if I tally up in-person events and, and things that I've done just this year alone. Um, it's probably a startling number just, you know, but in, and I really think that's been a large contributor to my success as well too, because when you can see how people. Um, but you, you think about the opportunity cost, if you didn't invest, for example, and it took you three years, you know, there's still people that have been at the agency game since I started six years ago. I started six years ago. There's people that still haven't hit hundred K a month. And I don't mean that to be like, oh, they're less than us. No, not at all. It's just people are on different paths. They have different access to resources, different mindsets, different belief systems. But regardless, if you look at the people that really succeed, they commit and they go all in. And I think there's definitely fear in investing, but think about the opportunity cost. Imagine if it did take you three years, how much money could you have made that you didn't make? because you didn't invest and how much money are you going to make now? Because you invested and yeah, maybe upfront, it was quite a bit, but now you have a hundred K month business. You know how to do it. You kind of went through it and you also have the confidence, which is, uh, it's really interesting. And I, I don't want to take away too much, um, 
too much from you. I, I'd love to ask you a few final questions, but I think it's really interesting because financial freedom, yes, it's about passive income and how much money you have, how much liquid cash you have, all that, all that stuff. But part, a part of the equation of financial freedom is also how confident are you in your ability to generate income? That gives you peace of mind. And that's really ultimately what we're after with financial freedom. It's not just like knowing we have money coming in. It's also like being okay, not being worried about money. But that peace of mind only comes from taking the leap. It only comes from committing, going all in, and then getting the result, and then knowing you're able to go back and do it all over again. Like, how much more confident are you in scaling to 100K a month if you had to start all over again from scratch in a brand new niche, not dental? Extremely confident. That's what that's, you know, um, it's funny. You know, I talk to the people now and I'm like, man, you know, I truthfully feel like, you know, I could, I could scale in, in, in another niche, um, you know, just as quickly, just like Jared Curry was able to, as soon as he had those pieces, the systems, the confidence, the know-how, the knowledge and the network to be able to, um, you know, make that agency move lightning quick. Um, so I think that, yeah, absolutely. And I always talk about confidence. It's a, it's a, People look at people who take risks, run businesses, um, are confident, uh, you know, hold political positions. And they're like, man, like, I wish I was like them. You know, I wish I had like the courage and, or, or, you know, the ability. But that comes from, from constant exposure to very small risks, very small, that build up in your ability to be able to tolerate larger and larger risks. Um, because like, there's just like you said, right? Like business is about being able to play the game relaxed and the larger risk you can take, maintain composure and kind of get through and navigate the situation, obviously the more rewarding it's going to be. So, you know, you they know. did a study and they analyzed people that take a lot of risk. For example, they analyzed the people that walk across the, um, those like the ropes, tight ropes. ropes. Yeah. And it's not that they weren't scared. <laughs> It's not that there wasn't any fear. It's that they were much more prepared to deal with the stress or the risks that come up. They were much more prepared to handle the potential chaos. But I think that only comes from having the experience and having the success, being able to actually build an agency for, in your case, to 100K a month. Now you know that the downsides, now you know how to handle, um, the potential risks involved in doing so. And you're also able to double down on the upside. If you had, for example, think about your next agency to hundred K a month. Don't you feel like you would be able to do things even better if you had to start all over again? Like, Oh yeah. hundred percent. Right. Out so of the then there's also that. Yeah. Um, but um, Vimo, just, we've got like five more minutes. Um, I'd love to ask you some rapid fire questions if that's okay. And Let's then uh, we can wrap up. Um, all right. I know the answer to this one, but I'm still going to ask you, what's your favorite way to acquire clients? Paid ads for sure. What budget would you recommend for people to start with paid ads? That's like the number one question that I get. Whatever. So I, my easy answer is figure out what the cost per lead in your niche is, and you should do two times that for your daily budget. So if it should cost you $50 to get a lead, run $100 a day. Cool. Love it. Um, if someone is trying to innovate, how do you go about that? And I know that's hard to answer in rapid fire format, but whatever comes to mind. <laughs> sure. Yeah, no. Um, and it's, I think innovation, it's, it's the three or four pieces that you talk about that you want to look at, right? Number one is the mechanism. Number two is, uh, I believe the delivery and three is like risk reversal slash guarantee, right? So um, although you can innovate on any one of those three, um, the top one's probably the hardest, right? That's the unteachable. In order to do that, I truthfully think you have to really be in your industry, attending events, talking to people mm. and understand what's on the horizon so that you can take um solutions from outside industries and bring it to your industry and that takes good peripheral vision i think that's where a lot of it can come from 
Mm, I really love that. I think most of the big innovations come from just listening to people, uh, either prospects or your clients or just people in the industry and hearing what problems they have. And then you're like, huh, I didn't think about solving this problem. For example, let's say that dentists, maybe they are now that you've solved their marketing problem, they know how to get patients, but now they're busy as hell and they just want to golf, go on vacation. Well, guess what? There's VA placement services for literally real estate agency owners, uh, coaches and consultants, like all the like internet marketing industries. But did you know that I have a friend that runs a, um, well, I have two friends that run VA agencies. One is Omir. Everyone should go and buy from him. He's got the best one. It's called Fava. But placed, uh, he's placed two <laughs> in mine. He's so my just a little, little, little shout out for him. But I have another <laughs> friend that has a VA agency for lawyers and it's taken oh, cool. off. It's taken off because no one was offering VAs to lawyers. So there's so many opportunities to innovate if you just listen. I love that. I think that's a really good, uh, really good answer. What would you say is the biggest challenge that people will have going from zero to hundred K a month? And how can they, what can they learn from you to solve it or work through that challenge a little bit easier? Sure. I think the biggest thing that people struggle with is closing paid ad leads. Once you can do that, you basically unlock the keys to your agency. Because I used to sell referrals completely different, friends, family, completely different. If once you learn how to and, and get it running ads, easy. You can someone can do that for you, right? It's figuring out how to sell a lead that comes in for your niche on your service from paid ads. Once you do that, you basically can scale quickly and you can start building out around yourself the other things, right? And focus on the sales. That's, that's my thing. I love it. So biggest challenge is closing leads that are not referrals. And Correct. the faster you can work through that challenge, the easier it's going to be to scale. That's what I got from your answer. I yes. think two things that come to mind just to add onto that. <clears throat> you have to run paid ads if you want to get good at paid ads. It's like, if you want to get good at basketball, Yes, you can lift weights and technically it'll make you more athletic to be able to be good at basketball, but ultimately you have to go to the court and shoot the freaking ball. Like ultimately you got to play basketball. You want to get good at closing paid athletes. We have to run paid ads. And I think also number two, most people do not practice sales enough and you had years of practice, right? I still most... role play. I still role play. If yeah, I, I mean, change the... my offer a little bit, I start role playing. Yeah. The best people in the world practice. It's like, uh, um, even all the greatest athletes practice. So, um, let's see what other questions, um, what would you say, what would you say to someone that is maybe wanting to scale to hundred K a month, but just can't quite break through. What is your biggest piece of advice for that person? So that's trying to scale to hundred K but they can't break through, but they are a current agency owner. They're an agency owner. They're just like, maybe they're stuck at 10, you know, 5k, 10k, 20k. It doesn't matter. Just they're stuck. They want to get, they know they want to build a seven figure business, but they can't quite break through. What do you tell that person? How many appointments do you have? That's the question that I ask everybody. How many appointments do you have? What's the answer? Because if it's not, and, and this is what you told me, if it's not at least five a day, then you need to figure out how to get more appointments. That's really it, because that's where everything starts from, um, you know, because a lot of times people will be sitting there trying to work on their fulfillment, build systems. And I'm like, how do you even have time for that? And they're like, oh, well, I have like one or two appointments. And it's like one or two appointments <laughs> that, you know, your calendar should be full. Like I, I use Sunday, the weekend and after work hours if I have to do anything that's unrelated to sales. I freaking love that answer. That's why you are a legend, Vimal. Um, with that in mind, to close this out, two final questions for you. Um, what would you say to someone that's thinking about working with Agency Lab or maybe has never thought about it, but now they've heard about it and they're like, let me check this out. What would you say to that person if they're thinking about potentially joining? Again, invest in yourself. 
Um, if you've been on, like, you know, think about it like a game, right? Business is a game. And you're either in the game or you're on the sideline. There's no in between, right? So, like, if you, if you want to be looking from the bench and, and, you know, see everybody be successful, that's cool. You know, be a spectator. But if, if not, invest in yourself. You know, go all in in terms of that confidence. Um, and there's definitely the tools and resources around you um, to help you meet your goals. I said there's two more questions, but I lied. I'm going to throw in an extra one. What would you say makes Agency Lab so special in being able to get people such crazy results? Community, number one, hands down. I mean, from I've seen people join, it, like, again, I don't have personal experience with all these other coaching programs, but I do know tons of people that have come to Agency Lab from other coaching programs. And hands down, it is the community. Um, the course is great good to search in, but myself personally, I attended the calls. I was, a, I'm a call guy. I like speaking with people. That's the best way to find out what's going on right now. And even still to this day, I make as many calls as possible. Um, not only, not only does Vimal attend the calls, he actually is now a coach in the program. So oh, yeah. we have a, once a week, we have what we like to call a 100 K a month agency owner call where we bring on a $100,000 per month agency owner and they coach and Vimal does one of those calls. So for anyone watching, if you got, if you want to be coached by Vimal, um, you can, uh, definitely check out agency lab. And, uh, if you guys have any questions, just don't, don't hesitate to reach out. We're more than happy to help and, and answer any questions that you guys have. Um, as always, there's a link to schedule with our team below this video and to get more information. And we've always got some crazy offer going on. So definitely go book a call and ask what that crazy offer is right now. Um, with that in mind, Vimo, one final question for you. If you had any words of wisdom to share with the world, with anyone watching, um, what, what do you want to say? What, what, what words of wisdom do you want to share with everyone? Uh, watch this, take action. Be ready for part two, 200 K. I love it. Let's <laughs> freaking go, dude. That's, that's savage. I like that. <laughs> we'll Guys, be there. Not too long. Part two. I will bring Vimo back for the 200. He, he, you know, he said to me, yo, Joel, when I hit hundred K a month, you better have me, uh, do a master class for the whole group. So actually in agency lab, if you guys want, there's an entire masterclass where Vimo breaks down way more tactically, like step-by-step, step. like here are the ads, here's the offer that I ran, here's the funnel, here's the offer, here's how I priced it. If you guys want to get access to that, also book a call um, to learn more about agency lab. We have that masterclass uh, in the program, uh, but we are going to do a part two for uh, 200K a month. So I'm excited to have you. I'm going to just throw it on the calendar. <laughs> Do it six months from now, man. Four. Four. All right. That's fine. <laughs> it's like, I feel like, dude, to get to hundred K a month is all about like paid ads, uh, systems, having great offer, um, starting to build out the team, right? 200 K a month. It's doing more of the same. Maybe you go to like two conferences for dentists build a backend program. So build the second thing to sell to your clients. That's more expensive. Your 200 K a month. It's, it's yeah. actually pretty simple. It's like, after you told me about uh, Sergio's method um, on the upsell already, already nailed five. So yeah, it's already, it's already there good. You go. So, yeah. There it's you go, man. Month. So I think, uh, yeah, I think it'll happen faster. I think like zero to hundred K a month is, is there's more moving pieces, but I think uh, they get 200 K a month. We're definitely gonna have to remove you from sales, build a backend program, maybe get like, like I said, one or two events where you can really boost, uh, the number of clients with like an injection. We're like one weekend, we closed 20, you know, that really helps. And, uh, you'll be a 200 K a month. So Ben, well, thank you so much, man. You're a legend. Really appreciate you being on here. Uh, if you guys found uh, value in this video, definitely go follow Vimo uh, on Instagram. Where do you want people to follow you or find you if you yeah that's that. cool just check us out at cobia marketing that's our handle cobia marketing uh make sure to give them a follow show them so, some love anytime that they post comment 
and like their posts and just uh, help them out. So Vimal, thank you so much, man. And uh, peace out. No problem, Joe. Appreciate it, man.